Well, let's follow up on Canada's position in, uh, on the fight against ISIS with three MPs. John McKay is the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of National Defence. James Bazan is the defence critic for the official opposition Conservatives. And Randall Garrison is the defence critic for the NDP. They join us from the foyer of the Commons tonight. Good to see you, gentlemen. Good to see you, uh, John McKay, let me start with you. Uh, the House will begin debate tomorrow on the government's new mission. How long will that debate last? And when will the House vote on the new plan? Uh, <laughs> That's a good question to which I don't have a very good answer. Uh, they'll debate all day Wednesday, which is really half a day on Wednesday. Uh, Thursday is an opposition day, and I don't know whether James wants to take his time to talk about it further. Friday uh, will likely go back to the debate. Monday likely back to the debate. Okay. And then Tuesday, uh, it depends on how long the, uh, the opposition wants to go, uh, whether it's exhausted itself or whether there's still uh, appetite to continue to debate. Okay, let, let me uh, stay with you for just a second here to get the, this question. Uh, how will the government in the debate, and I guess we've, we've heard some of it and we'll hear more tomorrow, how will the government reconcile the key component of this mission, which is ending airstrikes by our fighter planes, but agreeing to keep refueling other coalition fighters so they can keep bombing? Well, it's, it's relatively simple. We've, we've uh, agreed to uh, triple our uh, advise and assist mission. We are doubling our intelligence mission. We are putting in medical capabilities. We are um, expanding our diplomatic efforts. The bridges were burned by the last government in that area. Humanitarian mer uh, mission is expanded. We have now 20,000 refugees uh, that are relocated in, the, in this country. Um, and so all of which uh, leads us to the decision that uh, the jets are being, uh, that, that particular capability be, is being done by uh, others. And if I may take the opportunity to read what Colonel Wary uh, said when, uh, right, when Canada's mission quickly, with us. Well, he, he said that uh, this Iraqi army needs to be trained. It's one of our primary lines of effort. As we see nations like the Canadians agree to triple their presence, we find that extraordinarily helpful. So our coalition okay. partners are on side, and uh, we think that this is the way for Canada to go for the next while. Mr. Bazan, what's wrong with the government's new approach to the battle against ISIS? Well, first of all, uh, it is pulling out our CF-18. So we're out of the combat mission. And we do believe that you have to have a whole government approach here, and that includes combat, just like we did in Afghanistan, just like we did in, in the Korean War, just like we did in, in other conflicts, that we were always part of diplomatic and political solutions, we we're always part of dealing with humanitarian relief and refugees, and we we're also part of the war to get rid of uh, those committing mass atrocities. And then today, that is ISIS. Okay, and but so, let, me, let me start jump in. So is this a... Uh, is this a philosophical requirement, uh, in, in your view, that uh, pulling out the fighters sends the wrong message? Because, I mean, if you look at the numbers, they've only been involved in about 2% of the, of the bombing. So what's lost if Canada stops bombing to do other things? It's not like the rest of the uh, coalition but, but, partners but, won't pick up that slack. But, Peter, it comes back to the fact that we can do it all. We already got the CF-18s there. Why would we pull them out and bring them, bring them back to Canada? Okay. We should leave them there. And also, we know that, that when you have troops on the ground, and we're tripling the number of trainers, and that's great. We said we've supported a more robust training mission. But you also increase the risk factor. You have more people on the ground that can be attacked by ISIS. So it's great to have, as we witnessed in December, your own CF-18s there that our first priority is protect Canadian okay. troops. Mr. And the same is true for our allies that have their bomb bombers there. If we have a situation where ISIS is coordinating attacks right across the entire region, American jets, British jets are all going to go and protect their troops first and foremost, not the Canadians. All right, Mr. So that's why we need to, to have that, that, that air support there for our troops. Mr. Garrison, let me move to you. What, what concerns the NDP about the new Liberal mission? Well, I guess it's beginning to look like that uh, voters voted for change, and instead on this we're going to get some version of what the Conservatives were already doing. So we're not actually bombing with our bombers, but we're still involved in the bombing, and now we're expanding the training mission, which actually is not just a training mission, but it's an advise and assist mission, which leads our troops more and more into combat. So the NDP has said from the beginning and said very clearly, we think that the military mission is the wrong way uh, to confront the threat from ISIS. So there's much better things we could be doing. We should be focusing on cutting off their funding, cutting off their oil sales, cutting off the supply of arms, and doing something to cut off the uh, flow of foreign fighters by attacking radicalization here at home. Right, but the, and but the, the, government, the, but the, the government, coalition partners are doing a lot of that anyway too, aren't they? along well, with combat. Well, I'm, I'm more concerned about what the Liberal government is telling us they're going to do or not going to do, and okay. there's a whole lot of questions. We're going to need some days of debate, yep. and I hope the government plans to answer some of those questions in the debate. Okay, Mr. Uh, Mr. McKay, Mr. Gar Garrison has, has, has certainly raised the notion of, of uh, risk here. Um, so let's talk about that a bit. Uh, will those Canadian trainers and advisors, 
are, are they in effect, uh, notwithstanding maybe the description isn't that, but are, are they not in effect involved in a combat mission on the ground? Well, Gen General, uh, General Vance was quite clear uh, on two points. One, that there is a higher risk. There's no question when you put pe people in uh, harm's way, there's a greater risk. Uh, but he was also quite clear that this is not a combat mission. And, um, and so we have uh, taken a rather robust uh, change of, uh, of mission and uh, added all kinds of lines of effort, which we think uh, will be more helpful to the ultimate resolution of this conflict. Will the Canadian trainers be on the front lines with uh, Kurdish fighters? Well, they'll be, they'll be advising and assisting, but uh, the analogy that I've drawn in the past, which neither James nor Randall like, is the difference between a hockey coach and a hockey player. The, the, the hockey players are the, are the players. We are not combatants. The, the coach does not go on the ice, and we will not be uh, engaging directly. Well, we'll be on the ground. And the there's no score. question. There's no question, but that we That's will be on the ground. Doesn't work. And the risk will be higher. But if if this uh, conflict is to be brought to a resolution, um, uh, sometimes sooner rather than later, then you're going to need people such as our trainers and uh, intelligence okay. people um, uh, getting into uh, the actual uh, conflict Mr. area. Mr. Bazan, is this a combat mission on the ground? Well, uh, we've always maintained that that it, it, it's they only defend themselves when, when they're fired so upon. So you agree and they with you, the, the, yeah, no, they're not principal you, you, No, so yeah, you agree we, we, with Mr. McCann. Yeah, we, we, when we were government, we we, we uh, followed the same thought process right. on this. But let's get back to the point that that we need to be in a combat mission, though, and that that's what that the air, airplanes are, are there for. The CF-18s provided us with a very safe way to bomb ISIS and destroy them. And we know that that uh, the Kurds and the Iraqis appreciated us, and and, and the Kurdistan regional government said that that actually helped save lives and help defeat the enemy. So as we move into a spring offensive here where, where the coalition forces uh, led by the Kurdish Peshmerga and Iraqi security forces are going to try to retake Mosul and other key cities that, uh, that ISIS holds, we should have our CF-18s as part of this. If you're going to be part of, of, of the combat mission, you get to plan where our troops go, you get to plan where our CF-18s are and, and be part of that strategy. Right now we're on the outside looking in. We saw that happen with the meeting in Paris. We well, weren't okay, even well, invited I, to I, it. Well, are you, so are you saying that the Canadian government will have nothing to say about where it's uh, it's tripling we, the number we, we of trainers and advisors? They won't say. have anything to say about where, where they're serving? No. Uh, okay. You know, we, what we're, I'm saying is that as we move into the offensive, when the combat mission is defined and where the attack is going with our coalition partners, Canada will not have the same input. Case in point is and we've been saying right from the get-go that by becoming part of the you know, sideline players rather than being the people actually in, in the thick of things, we are losing credibility. And okay. Matthew Fisher oh, said this geez. weekend that if you think, you know, right now all the allies are going to say niceties out in public because that's the way allies and treat each other, right. but then you actually go back into the backyard is where, where you actually right. straighten things up. And, yeah. and, and Matthew Fisher said it's hogwash to think that our allies okay. are Mr. happy with us Mr. taking Mr. Garrison, is, Mr. Garrison, are you convinced this is a combat mission? Well, I think it is a combat mission, but I think there's a bigger question here, and that's how does ISIS sell one to three million dollars a day of oil on the world markets, right? And that's the money they use to pay their fighters and, and buy their arms. And who's selling them arms? Uh, why hasn't Canada signed the arms trading treaty and gotten busy trying to cut off that supply of arms? And when it comes to foreign fighters, why, what are we doing here at home and what are other countries doing to stop the radicalization of youth? And so if you really want to defeat ISIS, it's not a, really a matter of the combat mission that's going to do it because ISIS wants the combat. It's part of their ideology. They want the great military confrontation with the West. It's part of their millennial view of the world. And so let's cut off the things that make this possible. Let's cut off their arms and their right. money. I suspect we'll hear some of this in the let me, let me stay with you, Mr. Garrison, because I want to get your thoughts on this, and then we'll move to, to your colleagues. Um, what are your thoughts about, about where this is all headed, uh, the end game here? Uh, yes, ISIS is the focus of international concern, and everyone uh, is supporting the Kurdish fighters on the ground, all the coalition members. Uh, but they have their own motives. Uh, uh, the Kurds want an independent Kurdish state, and if ISIS is defeated by helping the Kurds, what happens when the Kurds then demand from uh, the West their own independent state? Uh, has enough thought been put into where this process takes us? Well, it seems from the motion that's been put forward, this is a very open-ended commitment without a clear end game. So where are we going to end up? And as somebody who worked in Afghanistan uh, on an international mission in 2002, we saw nearly 10 years of this same kind of thing where we didn't know what the end game was, we didn't know what success looked like, and we just kept pouring more and more into the same strategies. It wasn't very successful there, and it's not going to be very successful against ISIS. And Mr. McKay, what's the answer to that? Uh, well, I, 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 the short answer is there is no answer. 
the, the longer answer is to try and create conditions which uh, allow the various uh, interests in that world to arrive at their own answer. Hence the diplomatic initiatives I think are far, uh, greatly underrated but uh, are, are terribly important. You've got to bring the various uh, political parties and, and actors together so that there can be some solution. I, dis I don't disagree with you with respect to uh, Kurdistan and what they will want out of this fight. Uh, <clears throat> there's an obvious conflict between uh, what the Kurds might want and what the Tur uh, Turkey might want. Right. Uh, you've got conflicts uh, within uh, Iraq itself between the Shia and the Sunni uh, Muslims. Uh, uh, Grandel is not uh, incorrect when he talks about the, the um, um, the caliphate and in its, uh, uh, how should we say, religious zealotry, um, and uh, and so you, uh, it, it's an extraordinarily complex uh, uh, question you ask, uh, to which I don't think anybody can tell you what the end game is, uh, but we well, are let's... we are committed to uh, helping the actors in the area okay. uh, achieve their uh, their solution. Uh, perhaps a difficult question and a, and a complex question. Let, let's uh, let Mr. Bazan take a shot at trying to answer. Well, I think first and foremost, we have to defeat ISIS, and that's what everybody is there to do. And we keep saying that we have to uh, finally win this as boots on the ground, and the Kurdish Peshmerga are part of those boots on the ground. We have to enable them to do that. So uh, the training and, and uh, supplying them with arms is, is the correct uh, response. And the Iraqi uh, government has said that they, they, they welcome this. Uh, and so I know that the, that the Kurdish regional government and the Iraqi government are, have, have uh, good relations. They have a common cause in, in getting rid of ISIS. Uh, and it's also interesting note that, that Turkey and the Kurdistan regional government are working on trade, they're working on pipelines, uh, so there's cooperation. And the Kurdistan okay. regional government has given, ha, has, you know, disassociated themselves with the PKK, you know, the, the, the Turkish That's Kurdish right. uh, terrorist organization. Right. So, you know, things are changing, geopolitics are changing, but the first and foremost okay. mission here is to defeat ISIS. Well, I appreciate all of you taking time to speak with me this evening, and I uh, uh, recommend to our viewers that they uh, should tune in to CPAC tomorrow and uh, watch this very important debate taking place in their House of Commons, and I know you'll all be part of it, so we look forward to watching that unfold tomorrow. Thank you for your time tonight. Thank, Thank you. you, Peter. Thanks, Peter.